Hello and welcome to Pitch Me Moms. I'm Amy. I am a successful mompreneur. I'm a mom, obviously, of a badass three-year-old. She is awesome. And I'm a master at vetting out your business idea and telling you what you need to do to get on track. Today, for those of you who've been following us for a while, I am especially excited about today's episode because my ex-husband is going to be here helping me run the show. Yeah, it's going to get serious because we have some serious history. Great sex, big fat fights, canceled engagement, marriage, counseling, divorce, friendship, um, we're business partners. Like we have um, been through it all over the last, gosh, how many years has it been? It's like 20 some years. It's kind of crazy, but I'm really so excited that he's going to be here. And I'm going to reveal something before I introduce you to him. He is, for those of you who know my sticker machine story, he is totally to blame for it. He is totally actually, if I'm going to be really honest, totally to blame for the initial failure of my first business. Um, yeah, it's totally his fault. So for those of you who don't know, I launched a sticker machine company with Joel. I don't always include him in the story because, you know, I want to be nice. <laughs> and um, when we got our first account, it was this donut shop, and we had been hunting around for accounts for a really long time, and everybody was saying no because we weren't smart entrepreneurs, and we didn't know, realize, or even think to check about how many sticker machines were already out there. So we started our business in L.A. The market was totally saturated, so every entertainment center, every everything had freaking sticker machines in it. So we found this little donut shop. And this was our first account. And Joel, being the um, machinist, technician of our family, put the sticker machine together. And we were no sooner than popping off the, you know, five, the cork, the, the screw, actually, the cap, off of our $5 bottle of champagne when the manager called us because our 200-pound sticker machine had fallen on a three-year-old. And I got to tell you, it was, for both of us, probably the worst most panicked moment we have ever experienced I mean of course we're sitting there thinking oh my god I hope the kids okay so the, he was I mean he was bruised but we could have killed this kid with the sticker machine it was really really awful and what happened was we were stubborn not only did we not want to take advice from anybody else but we certainly didn't want to take advice from each other and we mounted I say we because I really want to be inclusive we mounted the sticker machine improperly. It wasn't tight enough. So the top of the sticker machine, which is the heavy part, wasn't mounted to the base properly. So when this little kid came over and started hanging on the coin mech, he pulled the machine on top of him. So, and we didn't even have business insurance. Like this is how green we were and how much we didn't know what we were doing. So I just wanted to share that with you. But in all seriousness, of course, I take full responsibility for our business. So that part I am teasing about. And in fact, always hear me talking about how critical it is to take full responsibility for your business, every part of it. So it was my business, it was Joel's business, and every piece of what worked and what didn't work was on us. But it brought us to where we are now, and I am so excited that he's here. Let me just tell you before I bring him on why he's here, or why I, I really wanted him to be here. Um, he's here because he's really funny. Um, he's a total jackass. And that makes for a really good show, like entertaining. No, just kidding. Not completely, though. Um, he is a superstar entrepreneur. I mean, literally went from scoring baseball games for a live sports show for $15 an hour to five years later becoming a multi-millionaire entrepreneur with over 500 meditation apps and downloads that you can see offered on all the traditional and hip platforms from Audible to iTunes and various other platforms. He is a certified hypnotherapist and a master practitioner of neurolinguistic programming. He's freaking sold over 3 million downloads of his hypnosis albums. And to be honest, too bad for me because he did all of this after we got divorced. So it's not really benefiting me. Um, no. But that's why I have him here today. So Joel is here because we love each other and we have so much fun together and we love helping each other succeed and he has so much to share about creating a viable business and I think if I think about what I've learned from Joel there are two I've learned so many things 
But there are two main things that I really get left with when it come when I, when I think about Joel. Number one, test, test, test. Like whatever it is that you're doing when it comes to marketing, don't spend a lot of money on your marketing unless you've tested and gotten results. And then when you know that you are getting results, then put your energy and your time and your money towards it. And the second thing is don't let your negative stories run your life. If you change your story, you actually change your life. You know, we made a commitment that despite the fact that we don't have kids together, um, that we would support and we would love each other and stand by each other forever, and we do that. And he, so for me, he is the most loyal, committed man I have ever known, and it is a privilege to have this incredible relationship with him and introduce you to him. So, Joel, I'm really glad you're here. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. I like the best part of that introduction was when you said I was really great at sex. So... Um, right. I want to promote this show, so I am known for the great <laughs> sex ex-husband. Thank you very much. This will go awesome. a long way. <laughs> awesome. Do you want to dig down into that? Do you want to dig into... No, I think it speaks for itself, Amy. I think... Okay. All right. Okay, good. Um, no, thank you for being uh, the generous introduction. Amy could tell you some pretty um, non-flattering stories, um, but uh, yeah, she we've we realized we were married for a reason because we think alike in a lot of ways and it's just those few ways that we don't think can I can I reveal a little bit about you oh uh, would you please Amy's a little OCD <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not uh, so she would drive me crazy with her order Right, and uh, but I've learned so much in business from her. I mean, she is a master. I mean, she doesn't necessarily know how much she's taught me throughout the years because I am very sorted. I'm more creative. I run out and you know think about you know I look at the the the, the clouds for a little while, but. Uh, she really give, gave me a sense of order and a sense of being like really keeping my word and meticulous. Like how to be meticulous. I st okay, I won't go too far off, but Amy had to teach me how to put the uh, dishes away in the proper order. I still put the damn dishes away in that proper order. And now when somebody doesn't, I'm like, no, 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 no. Okay, listen. This is You're how listening. you do it. The truth is we just need to abandon all that because there's nothing about any of that that's actually any good. Like being a perfectionist is like the worst thing ever because while Joel <laughs> sits on his multi-millions because he doesn't worry about shit like that. And, and at the end of the day, it doesn't get you anything because you're never going to be perfect. So um, it's just funny how that comes around. But I'm really glad the whole world knows about my OCD now. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, look, I think the I think our two different styles work well together. That's that's the main point. Is well, as long as you we're not living better. in the same house. Hell, no. We need a thousand miles of uh, uh, of distance between us. <laughs> that's so right. So uh, enough about uh, our uh, yeah. our our wonderfully well, failed. Help, you're gonna help me do this today, and I'm really excited about that. And we yeah. have this fantastic guest, Fonda Smith. And but but before yes. we bring her on, um, what just your story is so cool. We started this business. It totally failed in the beginning together. Then we actually created a really successful business. Um, then when we got divorced, there was like cut two years later where you were literally $15 an hour um, scoring baseball games. So I think you went from that to you know being a multimillionaire. I just want to know what what is your secret to your success if there was one secret? Well, you know, there's something freeing because after, you know, I, I took over the vending business and then I sold it. And the person who I sold it to ended up not paying me a lot of money at the end. And I was really used to um, that money, that flow, and that lifestyle. And there was something really freeing about having everything taken away from me, like literally everything. I mean, I was eating Nutrisystem because it cost me $315 a month. 
I knew exactly what my food bill was. Like, so I got to start from total scratch. Like I got, I said, because I was acting in Los Angeles also, and I said, I got to say, what do I, who do I want to be? What do I want to do? What are my talents? What are the things that I could put together that I love to do, which I have voiceover training, I have coaching training, uh, and Amy's actually the one who, you know, I said, hey, I'm thinking about becoming a hypnotherapist or an acting teacher, and she said, be a hypnotherapist. I know a guy who does it, and he's really good, and he's really successful, and that, that was it. Then it just started hard work every Once day. Once again, though, I didn't get paid for that. I just want to... No, you did. You, you, you just get the accolades. <laughs> All right, well, let's keep going here because I want to introduce Fonda Smith, Joel. I'm really excited about it. Yes. He is the inventor of the shoe protector tip, which he's going to tell us more about. The shoe protector tit? Yeah, tip. What? Tip. Oh, T -I -T tip. Tip. Got you. I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> she has four kids. Four kids. She And she looks like she barely could have one. Um She's had two failed <laughs> marriages, which, which must have something to do with something here we're going to find out. She's a part-time radio traffic reporter, and her passion is inventing. So I... Did I read journalism in her background, too? Oh, yeah. She does have journalism in her background. Thank you. For awesome. Mentioning. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so Fonda, are you there? I am. I am. How are awesome. you guys doing today? Good. We're awesome. really glad you're here. Thank you. I'm glad you invited me on the show. Interesting right. stories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's more, but we I'll won't go later, into that. Yeah. We'll I know, go into right? yours now. Well, yeah, Wait. we want to talk about your story. I want to actually find your face, and I can't find it. Oh, here, there you are. Perfect. Oh, you, are. you look beautiful, and it doesn't look like you could possibly have four kids. That's Thank you. Four kids, ten grandkids. Four wow. kids. Now, I know that you aren't married, so are these guys involved? No. They're not. So you really no. do really we don't have the same type of relationship that you guys have, no. Yeah. <laughs> Got they've moved on. So what well, we didn't have before, kids, so obviously we're here to pitch and talk about the shoe protector tip, but mm -hmm. something went drastically wrong there, right? Two because right. you, you you know, you admitted it. Two failed marriages. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? What went wrong? Well, I always like to say that they weren't the, the only ones that made mistakes, you know, mistakes in a marriage. Uh, it took two. So I made just as many mistakes as they made as well. Um, so there were just a lot of crazy things going on at the time. Joel, I think you can attest to this. I do have a journalism background. Uh, there was a period when I was working in television as well as radio. I've always had at least two jobs since I was 15 years old. So I didn't spend a lot of time at home, and I think that contributed a lot to it. Um, my job was more important than my marriage at that time, uh, so that's why I say I made just as many mistakes as they did. It was just more of a yeah. priority. So and what? Yeah, and I think. Was, well, go ahead, Ames. No, 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 go. Well, I think. Well, I mean, look, I, and. The beauty of uh, getting a little bit older and having experience is hindsight, right? Like hindsight's twenty twenty. We can we can look back and say, okay, here's here's my part in the matter, and here's some things that some things that may or may not be mistakes, but that's how life went, right? Right. So it's it. Yeah, and we all have that. You know, I mean, we all have that in our past. So what do you think moving into, I know this, I know we're, we got the shoe protector tip with mm -hmm. a B. Have you always been an inventor? So, I mean, clearly you have some freedom now. Your kids are mostly grown up, right? They are. I have a 13-year-old at home, but the reason I really have some freedom is I lost my uh, full-time job after 10 years uh, in 2011 when a lot of Americans lost their jobs as well. Uh, so I was single, a uh, single parent, divorced, not a lot of money, and I had to kind of just change my outlook on life and everything that I was doing just to be able to survive. Uh, so it took me a couple of years, actually several years, to get things turned around. I lost my home, lost my cars, uh, like a lot of other Americans, and I had to just take a step back and look at my life and say, 
what do you really want to do? You're over 50, and this is Fonda's opinion, but there aren't a lot of jobs out there for people that are over 50. That's just what I ran into. And I had to ask myself, do I really want to work for someone else? I have an opportunity for the first time in my life to really do something that I want to do. You asked me about being an inventor. I have always had a passion for inventing. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. You guys can laugh if you want. But when the VCRs first came out, I remember sitting on the steps with a friend, and I said, you know, wouldn't it make sense to put those inside of televisions? Oh, Think that's about it. Yeah. But right. I never acted on it because no one pushed me. No one told me that it was something I could do. So now in 2011, so it's been a while, you were in a really pretty dire place. Yes, I was. How were you taking care of your 13-year-old? Uh, yeah, I was working part-time jobs. Uh, I told you, ever since the age of 15, I've had two jobs. The one part-time job at the radio station, which is an NPR station here on the campus of Park Atlanta, um, I had been with them for close to 17 years. I never quit that job. So I still had that job. It wasn't paying a lot, but I would work other fill-in jobs when I could get voice work or whatever would come along. I just did whatever I had to do to survive. So that's what you've been doing until you decided you were going to start making inventing a real thing. Yeah, it's been rough, but it's okay. I, I maintained a roof over my head and my daughter's head. Um, I kept food on the table. Um, I drive a 1970 Ford LTD. I had a Maserati Sweet. when this began and a Mercedes. So you learn how to scale back, you know, and then I'm old school. Um, so I remembered what it was like to have nothing. And I was okay with that. There were certain things that I learned to prioritize in my life. I love it. Um, you're an inspiration to a lot of people. You have a really good attitude, and I think that's going to take you far um, in, in this business you're going to create now. So talk to us about that. What um, is this? Do you, do you have a business or just an idea at this point? I have a patent for the shoe protector test. Yeah. My patent is six years old. Now, a lot of people ask me, why didn't you act on this before? Well, my response, is, response, excuse me, response to that is the fact that life got in the way. You know, the, the problems, the financial problems, the survival issues. So I've decided to move on this and start moving forward no matter what it takes just to push forward, stop procrastinating, and do something that I really want to do. Shoe protector tips came about from the fact that well, back in the day I used to wear a lot of pointed toed shoes and Amy I think I'm sure you have several in your closet as well. Mm -hmm. uh, women have always worn pointed toed shoes and we will always wear them moving forward. It's a sexy shoe. The problem with pointed toed shoes, I'm going to show you an example here, is the tip. Now Amy I think mm -hmm. you can attest to this, the fact that the tip wears out and we always have problems. Now this is a cheap pair of pointed toed shoes, okay? But back in the day, I would spend a lot of time at shoe repair shops saying, what do you have to fix this? I've messed up my favorite pair of shoes, and the guy would always tell me, and an older gentleman, may he rest in peace, uh, he was one of my, uh, one of the individuals that helped me to realize there was nothing on the market to protect the tips of shoes. And we started talking about that, except for a little bitty rubber piece, and I used to get it put on all the time, and it was ugly. It really didn't is, protect. I'm just going to cut you Boy. off for a minute. Joel, are you not watching her, thinking to yourself that she should be like on the Home Shopping Network? I mean, I'm just thinking yeah, here when you first, you're like, and Amy, here is the shoe. And I think <laughs> you can attest to the fact. Got her elevator pitch down right? already. I think you can attest to the fact, yeah, and you're already talking about features and benefits. Yeah. Um, are you a performer? Or is yeah, you just, um, Joel can attest this. My undergraduate degree is in journalism. I yeah. have worked in television and radio over the years doing news and traffic. And have you ever sold anything outside of I, those venues? I was a sales manager for over 10 years uh, at a couple of stations while I was working the double jobs. Um, so I've done, I have a strong sales background and marketing background. And you're most of well, your Well, you know, that's a huge, it's a huge advantage, whatever business you start. A, uh, Amy and I, she was, she was an actress also. I think what um, these days, especially with social media and all of those things that's involved in starting a business, pushing a business, and having people discover it, is being camera ready, and you have a really great presence on Thank camera, 
you have a great voice, you you um you really sound like you know what you're talking about. Now I don't know shit about women's shoes except for when they look good. <laughs> you <laughs> like the leg that's, in pointy toed shoes? And that foot that's in it, okay? Right. But do you like but, women in pointy toed shoes, Joel? Isn't I that do. sexy to you? I do. Okay. I do. I'm not going to go too far into it, but I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, don't go there. Um, we, no. have some, we have some Vegas stories. Sure. We're gonna. That's for a different show. A different um, show. Mm -hmm. So, where are you at so far? What have you? What What kind of research? It's been a while. So, what kind of mm -hmm. research have you done on your competitors? What else? In terms of knowing what else is out there? Mm -hmm. have you, well, I hold the patent. There's nothing else out there like the shoe protector tip. And even though I've had the patent for six years and have not acted on it, I've con I've always watched, you know, the market and checked periodically on other patents to see if anybody comes up with anything close to it. Um, my concept is to sell it on two different levels, retail and wholesale to the shoe repair shops. Still nothing like that in the shops. Now, I've been watching a little closer since the emergent, uh, emergence, if you will, of the red bottoms. Think, you know, this is a pair of red bottoms, Amy. You know what I'm talking about. Yes, you I know do. how expensive these shoes are. Look yeah. at the bottom of them. This, I borrowed this from a friend of mine. Yeah. These are not mine. Um, <laughs> no protection. This shoe costs $675. And she's only worn them, I think she said, about three or four times. You know, so that's where the concept came from. And again, there's nothing out there. Borrowed this pair from her too. Special edition, twelve hundred dollars. Wow, Fonda. Okay, it's so real. it's perfect because I really don't know much about women's shoes. So tell mm -hmm. me how. Give me the concept of how it's going to protect the shoe and it's a um, without changing the the fashion of the shoe, right? Like okay. the. Look at him, it's, Mr. Fashionista there, right? Get into this, really. It's like a V-shape, and it'll fit on the tip of the shoe to protect uh -huh. the tip and the layer underneath. I Is am it just now... Can you show us? Show us the shoe with the tip on it. Um, you. We haven't got... I'm working with a startup company here in Atlanta. I just spoke to them last week trying to raise the funds. It's called, um, I'm not going to name the name of the company because I don't have permission to do that, but they yeah, work with you fine. on making, right, making the prototype. So I have the patent. That's where I'm at. I've also started a GoFundMe page, but I'm also uh, talking to family members uh, to get in on the ground floor and make an investment, and I will use what savings I have as well to pay for the initial startup cost to get the three different prototypes with this company. I showed you three different types of shoes. The yellow shoes, which are mine, are like $10.99. The $675 pair, there'll be a medium um, size shoe protector tip. And for the $1,200, hopefully those will have Swarovski crystals because if you pay $1,200 for a pair of red bottoms, you're not just going to put anything on the tip of those. So are you going to buy the tips? Do you buy the tips separately or you're doing yes. deals with the shoe? Okay. Well, it would be nice if uh, Christian Louboutin called me and said, I want to buy that patent and take it over. But, um, they, but you wait, could, you... well, so that's my question. Let's go back to the planning stages. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about the way that you can roll this out? Have you, have you entertained the idea of doing deals with the shoe? Mm -hmm. But I need the prototypes first. Think okay. about it. You're not going to pay me for anything if you don't actually see what it looks like and how it adheres to the shoes. So, so that's it sounds where like you have a good plan. Stages. It sounds like you know exactly what you're doing right now. Am I wrong? I'm trying. I'm still feeling my way. I'm just going uh, based on heart and what I have to do. I, I like to say this, Amy and Joel, as well. With women, um, you know how the old adage, you fall backward and they're backwards and there's someone there to catch you? Well, I would probably fall backwards and hit my head. There's nobody behind me to catch me. I've got to yeah. do this myself. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, being a mother and being all, you know, that you've gone through gives you a really you, a, a mom is an entrepreneur. I don't care what you say. You have to be inventive, you have to look around the corners and you have to no see what's problem. coming ahead of you. I yeah. mean, that is just what a mom is. Now, one of the things I heard is use all my savings. Now, for me, it kind of now, I'm not saying that's wrong when you're passionate about something, but I also want to make sure that you 
have a, a business plan um, and that inside of that business plan you don't lose your house or you don't lose the roof over your head and I lost you know the house so that's gone we're in an okay. apartment so that's good but to <laughs> and know the old that you got car is paid. paid for so i've cut expenses back yeah so i'd like i mean what i'd like to see is is not you you know start bootstrapping at first you know okay. like really trying to go from cuz there will be a point where you're going to need to find the money right to get right. the prototype we're there now but you're a salesperson also have you thought about have you thought about bringing in a partner on this somebody who well, ha an investor who does have who will go through the prototype part I'm talking to family members Joel uh, that want to invest and get in on the ground floor I started a GoFundMe page that was my first experience with that and I had a friend tell me that um, you probably need to do a commercial or something else well you know I don't have a prototype so I can only send them to the um, to see the patent online and see what it looks like right. and I explained the concept so yeah that's where I'm at in terms of trying to get financial support Shark okay. Tank um, yeah not ready for them yet I watch it every Friday though love it <laughs> there's love a lot it. of good stuff on that show. I think you need to expand your okay. ideas about who you're pitching to right now you have to prioritize right are you still working two jobs or just one no just one part-time job now and, mm -hmm. and that job is paying the bills yes mm -hmm. and my daughter me? my daughter who's one of my investors yeah, the 22 year old she's a college student and she works as well uh, she's kinda helping me so to be honest with you we're kinda all living in a studio apartment okay great Perfect. You're keeping all of your expenses down. To Joel's point, I think he doesn't want to see you spending every dollar and not making the right moves. I think he, it, right now it's really key that you prioritize. So if you have part-time, whatever hours you're spending now, currently, you've got to be talking to more people. It's not enough to have okay. that GoFund page and talk to some family members. who. You should be talking to people every single day about investing and helping you. Okay. You already tried to get doing that. Have you gone to any? You haven't. Okay. Have you gone no. to any women's? Um, tried to get a loan? No. Okay. No. Do you know exactly how much you? I thought need? I needed the prototype. Uh, so that I've been thinking, and you guys can perhaps advise me here. I was thinking that I couldn't do anything until I had an actual prototype. You know, here's the thing, and Joel can back me up here with this in business. Don't pre-think anything. Don't pre-create okay. stories and then make them true because all they do is limit your ability. Okay. You know, to get out into market. Look at look at Spanx. I mean, look what happened. Yeah, to she's Spanx. around the corner. They're Have all, you they're... actually studied her story? Uh, no, no. So, I've heard it, but not really sat down and just you know got into it. But I've heard about it. Okay, so listen. You don't have to know everything. You're passionate and you're committed. But right now, you're not doing enough to get educated. Okay. So you need to start to look at people who've gone before you. It doesn't have to be in the exact same industry, but mm -hmm. it needs to be something close, something where there needed to be a prototype. What did they do? How did they get the funding? You need to start to study those success stories. Okay. Because you, don't, you don't need to reinvent the wheel here. There's a process. And you can't just sit here and just be in the conversation of, I'm just trying to get investors. I'm just trying to, mm -hmm. how are you trying to get investors every day? That's who you're thinking about, is who can I talk to? Who would care about this? Who cares about shoes? Who cares about the business idea? I mean, girl, I see you already on the home shopping network. I see it happening. But yes, you need that initial investor to get your prototype done so that you can even begin to go and pitch. And what was that movie I just saw? It was so phenomenal with, um, oh, what's her name? She's like the new... It girl in Hollywood, Blondie. She's doing all the um, bow and arrow movies. Um, I can't think of one thing Jennifer. I'm trying. To... Thank you. Yes, she just did a movie, and she is an entrepreneur. Oh, I didn't know that, but okay. Yeah, you want to watch that movie? I feel like an idiot because I am 46 and have no memory, or I have baby brain, or <laughs> I'm just full of it and have total liabilities here that I don't want to reveal. But I can't freaking remember the name of the movie. But anyway, so what I am trying to say is um, you need to be putting a lot more activity towards okay. getting that prototype done because someone will do this. Okay. They'll do it in a different way. They'll learn how to skirt around it. You, you need to be spending all of your time 
getting that piece done so that then you can go out and start selling. Okay. That's you're a saleswoman. Well, in Fauna, I was gonna that's where I was gonna go next is like really look at what your talents are. You mm -hmm. know, you, you have a sales background, you have a journalism background, you're T V ready, you know, um you you know you know how to handle yourself on camera. I, I don't know. You know a lot of your other talents also. Mm -hmm. And I would really put those together and say, okay, so these are the things I can bring to the table right away because mm -hmm. I've had the experience. You know, you may not have the experience of, I mean, you look, you went out and got a patent, and that's, you know, a great thing. And I actually have I don't two. Know a lot. What's that? I actually have, have two, two patents. I like inventing. Uh, nice. And that, they're old, though. I just never acted on them, but yeah. yes. Well, and, you know, there's a couple, you you know, people no. are looking for patents too. If you're not using them, yes. I like the idea of her partnering up with a brand. I love that I idea. Do. You I just do. need to be. You just need to choose inside of yourself that this is, this is your baby, and you and and it's 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 awesome. Especially when you sold it to me. When I first heard about it, it was like, uh, right. And then when I when you actually described it and showed it and okay, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, but you need to now get the courage. You need a hit list, girl. You need to go, who would be dream people for me to partner up with? So that's going to be a combination of people. People who already have established shoe brands, why not? Right? Why not you? Okay, why not me? Because well, there's something in... Well, one of the things I would, I would look into is what... What's taking you five years? Is, Life. Is, that's there what some, I mean. is there something stopping you inside, mm -hmm. like confidence, self-esteem, or or is there something in there that's not having you go out and or didn't have you go out and do that when you got the patent? I didn't think I could, and like you said, the confidence to do it. Um, I after the divorces, and I went through. Um, I'm advocate for domestic violence. Uh, so a lot of that played a role, and there was a lot of things that I had to uh, work on within myself. So I'm finally getting to that stage where I am comfortable with me. I feel good about me. I don't need a man or relationship to validate me, and that's not putting men down. It's just saying that um, it's all about me, and and I'm and I'm okay with me now. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that's a great place. That's a great launching point. You and know. confidence, Fonda, comes from practice. So you've obviously practiced that pitch a few times. <laughs> and that's why it sounds so fantastic. But I'm not here to, I don't have, I, I'm not getting into the shoe business. So you need to be pitching to everyone and anybody. This, you are an inventor. You're going to create a lot more than the shoe protector tip. I can't, I can't wait, yeah. Right? A so, list of ideas. You and so you'll keep creating, and that's what's so wonderful about being a creator. So right now, money doesn't have to be your biggest end game or reason why you would turn somebody down. You need to get into the market. Okay. Okay. So you need to create a list of people that you want to do business with, mm -hmm. and you need to start going out to that list every day. You're going to get more and more confident the more and more the, the more you pitch it. Get a coach if you feel like you just can't pick up that phone. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing that you, look what you I mean look what you did you answered this ad you got you're you're bold um, yeah you this is stage one you have a wonderful way of communicating you can absolutely do this but you need to be doing a lot more every single day it's not enough to talk about it anymore you actually have to do Trying it to push it it's you need Everybody to talk about it here. every single day I want to be able to if I were coaching you daily I'd be going great who did you pitch to today. What okay. potential investor did you pitch to? Who'd you pitch your idea to? Who'd you get this to? Look for actions that you can start taking right away. Even if you don't have your full plan, look mm -hmm. to see what what actions and make that list and say, okay, I can make five calls today. I can go, you know, I can, um, you get what I'm saying? Or I can spend, you know, a half hour on my business plan, a half mm -hmm. hour finding out who manufacturers or people that might partner up with me. Um, uh -huh. And then, you know, like Amy said, be talking and talking and talking. You know, okay. you're passionate about this, you'll 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 get it done. 
And then the last thing is those stories. I want you to start following people who you admire who've done what you're doing. I will do that. I'm, yeah, you're I'm gonna definitely learn, encouraged. You're going to learn a lot through them. Excellent. Okay. Awesome. Thank okay. you. This is fantastic. Did you get some value today? Do you have some takeaways? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I so see her. I so see you on the Home Shopping Network. I just see it. Yeah. I mean, that whole opening, I feel like it, it was the movie I just watched. You are her. So, I feel a lot better. Yeah, you just need to stay focused, prioritize, and do what Joel said, take action every single day. And, and you know, I want to say this to everyone out there. It is so critical. We have all these great ideas. You know, we love our product. We love our service. And then we just sit with it. And there is a disconnect sometimes between you know this thing that we have that's so valuable this fantastic coffee cup and then sharing it with the world sharing it with the world is the key you don't have to be good at it at first you're gonna go out there you're gonna pitch you're gonna make a fool out of yourself you're gonna fall things aren't gonna go well that practice is a where you're gonna get your confidence it's B where you're gonna get good and C it's the only way that anything's gonna happen it's the only place you're gonna make money it's the only place you're gonna achieve success do you want to add to that, Joel? The, I, I would just say, look, you're going to run into to you're going to run into hurdles, and I always say there's there's no such thing as failure. They're just lessons. They're just things to take into account the next day when you get up and you put your shoes on and you go out and do it again. You know, don't be attached to this idea as you've seen it or you've ruminated with it over five years. Let it move into different directions. Let, be able to listen to if somebody's giving you something might be different and be open to that this is going to transform or maybe become something bigger. You know, don't don't uh, get discouraged on the first no. Okay? Because business and he's absolutely right. Let's just close this with you know business is about success, excuse me, is about viability. So this has to actually work. People have to want it. You have to test market it. You have to have made sure that women would actually buy this. Have you done any of those studies? If you haven't, then you need to go out there and do a survey of 100 women and ask okay. them if they would purchase this product. You need I as much that. Good. Everybody right? said yes. Good. Okay. So anyway, um, I am so glad that you were here today. This was totally Thank awesome. You. And what a wonderful opportunity to be able to hang out with my ex-hubby, Joel. All right? Come on. Right? Oh, yeah. Not so bad of a guy. Well, I mean, you know, that's debatable, but we'll go there later. Are, we, are you going to come back? Can we do more of this together? Um, we'll see. I'll talk to you afterwards. Um, it just depends. Now, of course I would. This is great. Well, I, you know what's <laughs> fun about this is I learn. I get to hear my own advice, and then I get, I go, oh, you wow. better take that. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm up to different projects every single day. And you know it's great. It's easy to let it fall out of my mouth, but sometimes it's hard to take my own those actions. I need to know that I need to be taking today. So this is great for me. So thank you both for being so generous and kind. Awesome. And yeah. letting me on this call. Well, everyone, stay tuned for our next show because on our next show, what we're going to do is probably talk about why Joel is so great in bed, and we'll really break it down yeah, for everybody. Absolutely. So I have a. That, that, that might be for my men's show. Oh, okay. Not appropriate for this. <laughs> All right. Well, if you've got a business idea that you want some advice on or you just want some tips and tricks to being successful um, as a mompreneur, then subscribe to Pitch Me Moms and come back because it's going to be Amy and Joel. And it's going to be really fun. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, Joel, what? Thanks, guys. Okay. Bye.